Hello YouTube, DeBodry here. Welcome to EV Components Review. Uh, on the bench is the QS165 V2. Over here is the QS165 V1 stator. Uh, if you folks like my content, please leave comments, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends about me. Uh, viewers is how I make money on this stuff, if I do. And uh, yeah, every time somebody views my videos, I get a few pennies from you. And that uh, makes it possible for me to do more things like this. Alright, so um, in my last video, or last videos, I guess, uh, it was prognosticated that this motor actually had two sets of windings on it. And in fact, it does. And that's what these are. Uh, these are the two start connections for the two separate sets of windings on here. So there is one set of Y uh, windings on here and another set of Y windings on here. And I have split those apart to prove that this is actually the case. So anyway, this set right here that's kind of standing up, uh, that is set B. And this set over here is set A. And as you can see, I've marked them. I've heat shrunk them separate. And I'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, anyway. Um, I made some predictions, which I'll get to after a while, but uh, what the idea here is, is now that these are all marked as they are, and those two are blue, and those two are yellow, and those two are green, that's because that's how they were wired together originally, it's just that these were crimped together under the same ring terminal, and same for those, and same for those, and this way the colors are going to tell me which set of wires go together. And initially, all I want to do is just do some performance and efficiency tests with this motor. So with two sets of ring terminals on there, they will still go down to those exact same uh, screw studs that they ever did before. However, later on, <laughs> yeah, um, being that I now have these separate, uh, I can put this on one controller and I can put this on another controller. And now I can run this as two separate motors on the same stator. Uh, people say, well, why would you do that? Well, I actually use a hub motor. Right now I do. And it is got two separate sets of windings on it. It's a six-phase motor, just like this is. And I run it off of two controllers, and that works just fine. So I want to try that here as well and see what happens. It should just run and be no problem at all. Um, but yeah, we're going to do some future experiments exploration in that. And so I, since I had these separated out anyway, it just kind of makes sense to do this. So here they are, uh, ready to go uh, to be used as a single motor just by connecting those two together or run it as two separate motors. <laughs> so that's coming. All right. So uh, as you can see, I have added a red varnish on here. I did not rebind this. Um, unlike the V1 motor, this was all pretty well done on this side of the motor. So there was no real point in pulling all of this uh, binding back off again and tightening it back up like I did on the V1. Because over here, this was all really loose. That was a much poorer job. And of course, then I bound it up again myself. Um, so all I had to do was add some red varnish on there. And here is what I use. This is by MG Chemicals. It's designed specifically for transformers, motors, things like that. Right here on the label it says, protects coils, transformers, and motor windings from arcing discharges, moisture, and oxidization. Um, not really worried about moisture and oxidization. Arcing might potentially be a problem, but I can't do anything about that because that would be like between strands inside the motor. So this isn't really going to help with that. Uh, mostly I'm just using it for binding the, the strands of wire together so that they don't move. And so I've mostly got that done in the places where there was things that was loose. Um, and that's that. Uh, I won't be adding a second set of position sensors to this. I will just be using the one. So if I do run this on two motors, one of them will run sensorless and the other one will run censored. So that's just how that's going to play out. All right, on the other side of the motor, and the same thing with temps. One of them will have temperature sensing, and the other one won't, and that'll be fine. Okay, on the other side of the motor, uh, as you can see, um, this got bound up pretty nicely. Uh, yeah, kind of went overkill mode on that, which I tend to do. Yeah, <laughs> so I cut a really long piece of, of binding thread, and here is my spool of that, and uh, essentially, 
uh, I went around three times here. So the first time I went in the center of each one of the loops, so they're kind of like a, a U-shaped piece like this. And so I went in the center, and since I had so much length, I went around again, and this time captured um, uh, like this side over here as much as I could. And then I went around the third time and captured this side over here as much as I could. So that I was binding each one of those loops as tightly as possible uh, in three different places. So anyway, yes, this is bound up three different times. And that's not going anywhere, <laughs> just the binding alone. And then, of course, I added varnish to it, just in case there was any loose spots anywhere, uh, which there still could be, like, down in little places like here. Um, so anyway, yeah, this is pretty much not going to go anywhere. Uh, it's all well secured. I would like to see this sort of thing happen on more motors. Um, this doesn't take very much time to do. I'm not quick. I don't build motors for a living, so I'm not fast. Um, but somebody that is fast, they can do this sort of thing in a couple minutes time rather than me that, you know, takes me like say 30 minutes or whatever per side. Anyway, um, the thing you really care about is the inductance and resistance, right? At least that's what the nerd folks are going to look for. Alright, so um, my predictions in the previous video was that uh, resistance here would be double of what it is across both of them combined together and that inductance would be the same. So uh, what I should see is 18 milliohms here and 18 milliohms here and um, 131, 132 microhenries on across any of these or across any of those. And uh, the inductance is totally based on wire length uh, and turns of wire. That's pretty much all inductor is. So yeah, uh, it should have been that the inductance hasn't changed because the wire lengths haven't changed. I've just simply separated one from the other. So inductance ought to be the same. Even though you've got two separate sets of inductors now, um, that still should be come out to 131 microhenries or pretty close to it. But the results aren't quite that. Um, instead, uh, B here came out to about 211, 214 microhenries, and A came out to about uh, the same, so 214, 215 microhenries. Instead of 131 or 132, when they're all com combined together. So why is the inductance now higher separated than they are when they're all connected together? That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> So if somebody can explain that one to me down in the comments, please do, because that doesn't make sense to me even slightly. All right, so the next thing is, um, I predicted that, and this is just Ohm's law, right? You know, you've, you've got two uh, parallel things, so when you cut those in half, you should have double the resistance. Um, so uh, 9 milliohms across here and here, uh, bind, bound together, should mean that 18 milliohms is here and 18 milliohms is here. But my actual results don't match up. So B, I'm seeing about 16.2 uh, milliohms, and on A, I'm seeing about 15 milliohms. So, yeah, half of 16 is 8 milliohms, half of 15 is 7.5 milliohms, or, you know, this is going to be 7.75 milliohms, right? Not 9, <laughs> like what I've got written down. So. Why is it that now I have less resistance than I did when they were bound together by QS motor? The only thing that makes any kind of sense that would explain this even slightly is that their crimps weren't as good as mine. They were using some other kind of solder that's higher resistance. I do use real lead, 6040 solder. I don't use you know the lead-free stuff. And I know that that does lower resistance. So that's enough to put a 2 milliohm difference in my connections. You know, I measured them here at the ring terminals after I was all done. So it should be 18 milliohms, 18 milliohms, and I get 15 and 16 instead. So if you have some ideas on what would possibly cause that, feel free to put that in the comments too. Anyway, um, I am going to mess with this motor some more. Uh, it's now ready to reassemble. I'm going to try it on one controller first, just so we can see efficiency like it was from the factory. And then I'm going to try taking it apart and play with this as well. 
uh, you know, two controllers running the same motor, that's a totally doable thing. I've done that, doing that right now on another motor. So yeah, this should be fun. Further experiments coming. Anyway, uh, talk to you all later. I hope that helps some folks out. Uh, this was definitely an amusing little project to pull this motor apart and to show its innards and to take things apart and discover its construction. Yep, I think that's it for this video. Take care, folks.